All right, uh, in this little short video, I wanna show you uh, how to approach a hind quarter. Uh, in a previous video, I showed you kind of the breakdown of these cuts, and I wanna start with one that I haven't touched yet, just to give you an idea how to get started. So this is the outside of the leg. Again, you can see these muscle groups, these seams that I mentioned in the other video. On the inside, this one I did not split the ham uh, on purpose because it was plenty cold, but on the other one I wanted to show you what that looked like when you split the ham, especially uh, in weather where you're not gonna be able to get this cold immediately. I highly recommend you doing that. But again, you can see a seam here. And uh, so this is what it looks like intact. Again, the inside of the leg, here's the ball joint on the femur. So let's get started here. So the way I approach this is pretty simple. This is a puzzle and uh, all you need to do is again follow the seams so i take the tip of my knife i use a really sharp knife uh, boning knife six inch boning knife and if you just start that you'll see that you can get your hands right down in here and in fact you can feel the femur right there so if you follow this around you can do this with a small paring knife um, a lot of people have these Havilon knives. They're very, very sharp. They're great for this kind of thing because uh, they're extremely sharp, but secondly, they've got a small little blade. So if you just follow these seams, I like my other knife. Uh, you follow these seams around, you'll see that this starts to come apart. Now, in the other video, I mentioned this outer membrane. If you get your fingers under this, you can actually kind of pull this Again, just loosen it up where you need to. You can pull this down, saving you some time later having to try to cut that off. Uh, if you get underneath it, you can just pull it off. But the name of the game here is simply to take your time and work on the connective tissues that are holding all these muscles together. So this is a sirloin tip right here. Now we're gonna go ahead and approach the uh, bottom round, which is this long strip right here. Start right on the seam, just start to open that up, and then get your fingers in there. And you will find a natural seam that you can uh, use to just pull this apart. this whole bottom round out of here. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna, I showed that other video, all you're gonna do here is cut out everything that's white in here. So here's your eye of the round right here. This dude is connected. Here's the eye of the round. This is your bottom round. You can just follow that seam right around. That's it, there's no actual cutting of that piece of meat. It's just the cutting the seams around it. So there's your bottom round. And again, you'll wanna come in and just remove all of this white stuff. There's a gland in here that you just will come out naturally when you pull this all out. You'll see a major femoral artery right there that comes down through. You want to trim that away too. So that, that exposes the top round, which is this beautiful piece right here. Again, the heel right here. I'll just go ahead and zip that off while we're here. right up on that lower leg bone. And if you're ever not sure where to cut, you'll see these seams, right? 
they're, they're pretty apparent. Obviously, on a deer or an antelope or a smaller animal, uh, this is much easier because you can kind of pick this dude up and flop it around as you need to. So there's that heel. On an elk, it's a little bit more tricky. So I'm going to work on this upper sirloin or rump. And this is, you know, a lot of people just kind of miss this. And they just kind of cut it off and throw it in the drying pile, and and that's certainly fine. But it, it is a it's a great piece of meat, and it if you want a maybe a smaller a smaller meal or smaller roast, you can tie this up, and uh, it makes a really nice a nice little small roast. Under there. tip is connected right at the knee now this is the again the shank this lower half I pull this off and uh, I basically package it up like that and uh, throw it in the slow cooker so here's your femur you're just gonna take and I just kind of walk this or roll this sirloin right off the, the top of the bone you just follow the bone with the tip of your knife. I use a, a semi kind of a flexible boning knife from Victory Knox, the company that brought you the Swiss Army knife. Uh, these knives are fantastic. I've had this one probably 25, 30 years. I also have a straight blade version of it. It's a more of a rigid knife. This is great for staking. I also have the new version of this knife uh, that I bought, I don't know, six, seven years ago, and it's fantastic as well. It's got a semi-flexible blade, and uh, these knives are just fantastic. They're very simple. They do the job, hold an edge well, and that's what you want. That's the other thing I'll say is you definitely want to keep your knife nice and sharp um, in this process. I'm going to do a knife sharpening tutorial. I use sandpaper on a piece of granite or a piece of uh, quartz stone uh, because sandpaper I'm able to step down and get a really, really fine polished edge. And then I use a diamond steel simply to keep that edge nice and sharp. And if you do that, this will make your job, your life much easier when you're your processing game at home. You know, nothing is more frustrating than trying to fumble through with a dull knife. So as you follow this bone up, you're going to remove that. And again, this is that, that upper sirloin. Um, let's cut that off. Trim this up, clean up the outside of this. Uh, trim up some of this fat. This can make a really nice little tied up roast. Um, I didn't leave as much on this ham as the other one, but uh, the other option is just simply trim it up and put it in your grind pile. So what you're left with here is sirloin tip. This is your sirloin. The, on deer, this is pretty small. So I typically will trim this for burger, um, but as you, as you release this, this uh, sirloin tip from the top round, there's your sirloin tip, again trim this up, this makes great um, jerky meat. Uh, it makes good steaks. It makes fantastic roast. Trim it up just like this. I've done that. Slice it thin for roast beef sandwiches. It's not obviously beef, but you get the idea. Same product. Now on the the uh, top round, 
uh, sometimes it's not really clear but there's there's a flap on top of this thing and <clears throat> again if you look for that seam on the outer edge you can find it and then feather this off and this will expose put a cut through there wish I wouldn't have done that but that's okay again just kind of following this tissue you pull look for the seam and then cut it so this beautiful top sirloin trim this up make stakes out of it there's also another kind of lobe in here if you look carefully you can find it if you open that up that right there what I typically will do is to kind of square this roast up I'll cut that down right off like that again another small roast uh, stew meat uh, you can butterfly that into little medallions however you'd like but if you come in here and kind of trim this up clean off the uh, this other end also when you have exposed areas where you when you field dressed your your animal you're gonna have some kind of dark even hard edges uh, go ahead and trim those off and to see this dark area here I'll come in here real shallow with my knife and just quickly fillet that off along with this fat cap on the back on a, a corn fed whitetail and uh, you're gonna see a lot of fat on the back end of these these west coast blacktails don't gain a lot of fat in the winter because they don't really need it um, we don't have long hard winters here so you end up with just a minimal amount of fat but if you just take off everything that's white when you're trimming these roasts up and, and really all of your meat you don't want to grind any of this stuff you don't want to eat it oh, here's another tip so you'll see in a lot of a lot of cuts you see all this bubbly this bubbly kind of membrane a dry paper towel is is your best friend here if you grab and pull it sticks to the paper and what I do when I'm cleaning up roasts and stuff is I'll go around like this and try to pick at those areas just to get that that kind of that residue off of there here's some on the back you just hit that with a paper towel just a piece of dry paper towel and it just it's like a magnet it just sticks to it it sticks to that dry paper and you can quickly uh, zip that off now this isn't done for me I'm gonna come in here I'm gonna clean this up I'm gonna cut all this stuff off but I'm pretty meticulous so anything that's white gets cut off for me um, I don't like any fat on any of my game meat because I don't like the flavor of wild game fat uh, if you do that's fine nothing wrong with it uh, I just prefer to have clean red meat with no fat or white connective tissue silver skin as much of that as I can get off I do I will grind a little bit um, with some of the thinner silver skin so as an example right here on this heel You'll see some of this light where the, where the silver skin kind of starts to fade out into the muscle. I might, I might grind that type of white on occasion, if I'm in a hurry. Um, it won't change the flavor of your meat, but I generally don't want anything chewy in my burger. So I'm pretty particular about it. I spend a lot of time, a lot of people, this would be done. Uh, for me, this is about 90% done. I'm going to spend more time getting all of this stuff off. It's just I like I like a really clean uh, piece of meat when I'm going to cook. So anyway, I hope that helps break this down for you. It's not that difficult. You'll end up with a lot of these odd-shaped pieces at the top end of your, uh, your hind quarter. And the best thing to do with this stuff is take a little piece at a time and trim it up, put it in your burger pile, it's great for jerky, sausage, um, you know, anything like that. So, hope that helped, and uh, give this a try. There's really no reason to pay a meat cutter 
to process your game. It's not difficult. Uh, you do need a grinder if you're gonna grind your own burger, but they're available everywhere. They're not expensive, especially if you're doing a deer. Uh, you can do it on a KitchenAid with a KitchenAid attachment, a grinding attachment. So don't be intimidated by this. It's not that difficult. If you wanna make all burger, you're gonna simply keep going. You'll cut this up into small cubes um, and then grind it up. So there you have it. Hope this helped you demystify the hindquarter on a big game animal. Uh, good luck. Let me know how it goes.